absolutely no idea how we're doing this with uh, the camera so praise the Lord it's working because it makes me look a little bit better than I do because I look horrible <coughs> and feel worse but <coughs> praise the Lord I wanted to say that God has been faithful to deliver me from death and to encompass me about with songs of deliverance and you know make my laughter and my joy to turn my sorrow into singing and my mourning into dancing not <laughs> because if you know me I'm like you I'm miserable so what we do when with our misery is the choice that we have as Christians either to operate according to the word of God and allow him to breathe life into our very existence even when we are dying as it were in the flesh we're perishing away and passing away from dust to dust from dust from which it came to dust to where it shall go and our spirit being revived by the word of God that we would give out that even when we are at the least of us you know and the least of our strength that he would renew us by his spirit so that we would be able to do that according to his will what he would want us to do and accomplish then praise the Lord you know you feel a little better maybe you don't but I do <laughs> at least a little bit so as I've been recovering slowly I've been <coughs> wanting to at least make one bitty bow to show how miserable I am while at the same time recognizing that God sees us as we are where we are without our makeup oh I don't wear makeup without our pretenses and contenses and you know our best foot forward you know and a lot of times people don't see us at our worst and that's when a Christian should shine at their most because God sees us all the time and that's the point that we should be recognizing whenever we are ill is to not hide the fact of our illness but rather to rejoice in the fact of our infirmity that he may be our strength because I had a friend and this is in dedication to him John Lingy who every day would come up to me Monday through Friday <coughs> <coughs> my house up above Klamath Falls Oregon up high above outside of town where I had this little tiny trailer I was renting and uh, he'd give me a ride to our little prayer meeting we'd meet before you know the town woke up and the pastor at the time was kind of a young pastor you know he was still learning you know he still had the joy of the Lord you know and he had some really good ideas and some really bad ideas and so he was kind of like you know learning how to balance the two you know and we all do that until the day we die you know we still learn well John was more of a mature you would say elder so John had this unique way of ministering to me he showed up by way of the Spirit of God whenever you least expected him there was John and so I at times was healthy at times was sick because with Crohn's disease you never know what you're going to be because some days you have a good day some days a bad day and so we used to pray Monday through Friday and as long as you know I had made a commitment he showed up well he gave me a ride and he would come in my my trailer knock on the door and open it and he didn't care whether I was dressed undressed or looking miserable he said are you going actually I think he just took me I don't think I ever said no I wasn't going but he would drag me down there to that prayer meeting and we would pray for the nation and pray for the pastors in the town and it was one of the most powerful times that a lot of people still to this day talk about at least a few of them you know some of the other ones forgot what it was like in those days I remember I was the writer so he would come and see me in various stages of condition because I was transparent with him I was sometimes up sometimes down sometimes miserable sometimes happy sometimes sad sometimes whatever but he had been a minister in the gospel mission so he was used to people from the streets so he didn't worry about what people look like he had seen them at their worst and seen them at their best he was a man of God and he was mature <coughs> 
that man inspired me in such a way because he kept bringing me whether I felt like it or not to do those things that God had contrived in my heart that I wanted to do and during the time span that it was accomplished there was a great light that went up from downtown as it were Klamath Falls Main Street that originally before there was a tape lending library that I helped start this helped lay the groundwork for that which would be a light shining in the darkness forever even later to this day I can tell you that up on the bypass as you go through the bypass there's a, a light with three crosses that the pastor that was part of this prayer ministry for the entire town in the basin had the wisdom of God you know and the anointing of the spirit to have this idea to put this up next to what we used to call the YMCA and as you drive by you can see it it's still a light shining it's kind of like there are little way markers all throughout Klamath Falls like if you go to Klamath Falls up on top you can see Lone Pine sitting way up on Hotback Ridge and it stands like a beacon as though the Lord were standing there looking down upon the town you see that's what you are you are a way marker you are a light shining in the darkness you are a way pointing the direction that God wants other people to go you may not always feel like it you may not always be like it but you know God still wants you to be pointing because you see the sign that says stop doesn't do anything it really doesn't it's a stop sign it stays there and people stop they obey because if they go through they get hit <laughs> or they get a ticket so you see it isn't really about you in the ministry and how you feel about it lots of times it's just about being you <coughs> and the more I discovered that the more I didn't care about like today my migraine that is just killing my eye that's making me sick you know I shouldn't be out in the cold air because I got the house all heated up and as long as I stay really warm my sinuses aren't killing me but you know coming out here to share with you you know you're really making me sick <laughs> so praise the Lord there's video for today how I feel <laughs> but the reality is is that every day we have the opportunity to pray to ask God to seek God to be with him and then be prepared for our day then go about our day as though God had anointed it for what he wants us to do and to be for surely God has called you to be a son of God and as you go about your day <coughs> whether you feel like it or not light doesn't have feeling light just exists so maybe you're sick hmm well I know what that's like and take a couple pills call take two etc and call me in the morning you know <laughs> no I mean there's a certain amount of prayer that you should pray for healing and I agree on that there's a certain amount of anointing that you should ask the elders to come and pray for you and I agree with that there's a certain amount of miraculous healing that God goes boom boom bam you know and you're healed but there's also a certain amount of suffering that people don't want to do and really suffering will bring you to a better place sometimes if you choose the way of suffering that Jesus did than if you just choose to be always happy camper and never being real about who you are in Jesus. Today, as we are pretty delirious and shaken, you know, and losing our equilibrium, if you hear his voice, good. If you don't hear his voice, stop what you're doing. Don't go any farther. Take a second look around and ask Jesus, um, could you make that a little more clear what I'm supposed to do today? Because I need to hear from you today and not me.